Welcome to Boomer Being. Today, I'm honored to introduce Deborah Raman Silberstein to you. Debbie has been practicing law for 27 years and has had her own office for 18 years. Debbie specializes in trusts, estates, and philanthropic planning. She also specializes in elder law. Debbie received her PhD from the Heller School at Brandeis University in 2009. Her thesis was on philanthropy. Many of you may know Debbie from the six years she spent on the school committee in Andover, three years as chairperson. She also worked for four years as a member of the finance committee. Debbie is widely published regarding estate planning and tax issues and currently serves on several advisory councils and subcommittees, including Long-Term Financial Planning Subcommittee for Governor Deval Patrick's Education Readiness Pro Project. What an impressive list of accomplishments. Welcome, Debbie. Thanks, Leslie. Please, tell us more about yourself. Uh, there's nothing much to add. I've enjoyed having my own practice, really, for the last 20 years, and practicing with a firm before that. And it's really a wonderful area of law that you get to know individuals and their families and um, really what they, what they want to do with their assets. For all the boomers watching with pressing legal issues on their minds, what can they come to expect when they come to your office? Uh, I try to really get to know people at the first meeting and to really understand what they're trying to accomplish and why they've come to a lawyer's office in the first place. Oftentimes, you know, unless people have been involved uh, in business transactions with attorneys, it's, it's oftentimes the first time in a family and sometimes when they're even in crisis that they've been to a lawyer. So understandably, um, you know, it's a big time for the family and a big time for the individual. And it's also, there's a lot of complex areas that, that you need to explain and people need to understand. And it takes, you know, it takes, sometimes it takes more time than others. Um, I'm sure. And sometimes it takes repeat meetings to, to do that. In preparing oneself legally to take care of a parent, what documents should everyone have in place? Um, you know, it's interesting. There are some basic documents, uh, but you'll find that, you know, people, they'll be at a cocktail party or they'll be with friends and they'll think their parents should have something, um, you know, that somebody else has. So every person, every family is really unique um, in that regard. But there are documents, basic documents, like a power of attorney, um, which uh, authorizes somebody to act for you either in the event of your incapacity or if you need it for other reasons, um, you're out of the country and aren't going to be able to communicate. Uh, and then there's the health care proxy. Uh, that helps you communicate your wishes with, with regard to your health care, if you're unable to communicate with your physician, you authorize somebody to act for you on your behalf. Living wills uh, is an advanced, something like an advanced directive. If you don't want to be kept alive by heroic me measures, uh, the state doesn't recognize those, but people often want those as an expression of their intent. Those are basic documents, but even you know, with regard to estate planning, uh, Something like a trust can save people a tremendous amount of time, money, inconvenience, and headaches down the road. Sometimes they're complicated to create. Uh, sometimes it takes us some work up front, uh, but it really is well worth it in the end. So, uh, you know, I try to communicate that uh, to people. And th those are just the basics, but, but everybody's different. Um, in elder law now, uh, we're using a lot of care agreements. There's a presumption that if a child does something for a parent, they do it out of love and affection and not to be compensated for it. Uh, sometimes uh, seniors looking for ways to protect their assets are using the care agreement more. So, you know, it is an evolved, it's an evolution of what the basic document is. But the healthcare proxy, power of attorney, living will, and trust, I would say, are the very basics. So it sounds like you evaluate each family and some may need quite a bit more than that. Yes. Yeah. How much can a lawyer help? Do you find yourself a resource for other professionals? Like, are you, would you 
be referring a family to an accountant or a social worker or other professionals? Yes, yeah, so that's a great question. You know, oftentimes you might get a call uh, from a child or a spouse of a older person that's in need of assistance. Um, and oftentimes they may not even need new legal documents, but they tend to call the lawyer. And so you can often refer to, yes, other financial related people, accountants, financial advisors, if you need something like life insurance or uh, long-term care insurance. But uh, in other cases, you need uh, referrals to geriatric physicians, geriatric psych psychiatrists, social workers, caregivers, even something as simple as uh, somebody who would come to a plumber or electrician who you know has some sensitivity to the needs of maybe an older person that's living alone who you've worked with in the past. Uh, so yeah, uh, we do act as a reference. And sometimes the, you know, somebody will come in for an initial conference and they really don't need legal services for maybe years down the road. They just need to be set on a path for the other things that they, get, that they need in the interim. It sounds like a full-time job being a caregiver. It, uh, yes, I mean, uh, the more you talk with people and the older I've gotten in my you know, 27 years of practicing, you've gotten to know more people personally and then through my practice that are just sandwiched in on both ends. They call it the sandwich generation. And uh, it's tough, a cutback in funding and uh, limited resources. And uh, it's a very uh, difficult time in people's lives. Which leads me to ask, what is the biggest single legal issue that people bring to you when they call up? Is there something that overrides all other issues? In elder law, um, you know, I, I would say there's probably three kind of categories, or maybe two. One is looking to really protect their assets, uh, protect them in the sense to make sure that the spouse uh, can stay in the home or that the spouse won't be stripped of their assets and will be able to continue to live the lifestyle that they enjoyed or that the children will be able to they will be able to hand down to the next generation what they've worked so hard for so I say those are pretty much I would say top priorities of people uh, but also uh, oftentimes there's conflict uh, among children about who should be who should act uh, who shouldn't be acting, uh, maybe taking advantage of a parent, or a perception of a parent being taken advantage. So I would say those are the two, you know, aside from estate planning that people need uh, to preserve their wealth, uh, focusing on the area of elder law, I would say those are the two kind of segments that I would say are most critical when people call with a sense of urgency. And they do sound like critical issues. Yes, and as the population is aging, uh, they're uh, you know, becoming more prevalent. So if somebody comes to you and they say, I'm worried, I have a parent that may be going into a nursing home, how can I protect our family's assets? Uh, is that the type of thing that you can help them with? I can. Uh, it's de the answer depends, and now I sound like a lawyer, but the answer depends on their situation. What are the assets? Do they have a spouse? Um, what are their needs? What's their current situation? And then it depends what, what people want to do. And I, I try to educate the individual and the family um, about what all their options are. And no option generally in the area of elder law comes without a, a positive or negative, like with each positive option, there's usually something negative about it. And it's important to me that families understand if they're doing, if they're taking a certain action to accomplish a certain goal, that here are the possible negative implications of what they've chosen to do. 